Anyway, relevant. Why chat thinks you can never misspeak on a minor thing? Four minutes of alt right. Say for the sake of argument, you're watching a political debate on TV. The conservative candidate has used their opening arguments to dump a truckload of dubious claims on their opponent. Now you recognize this maneuver. That's the gish gallop. The debater makes point after dubious point, and if the other debater doesn't rebut every single one, they will appear to have lost the argument. These points don't have to be good or hard to disprove, there just has to be a lot of them. Oh, but what's this? The liberal candidate seems to have come prepared. That's new. They succinctly and efficiently dismantle each of their opponent's arguments, offering a clear rebuttal to every single one. It's obviously not the first time they've heard this particular gallop. So the conservative's petard has just fully hoisted them. They've lost their own game and have to go on the defensive. Right? Turns out, no! The conservative points to a minor error. Maybe the liberal said their program would cost 40 million, but is actually estimated to cost 43, and treats them as an ignorance. It's so funny because, like, everything that uh, Innuendo Studios basically cuts, as far as like how annoying debates are, is straight up, straight up the, the, the uh, techniques of all of the most annoying debate perverts. I feel like they just literally look at this. They look at these videos and go, mm, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this next time. You fucking retired? Insomnia for life, lol? Hassan should never speak on gun topics again. It's so stupid, Lamal. This gun stream, I can't. Can you kill someone with a 22? <laughs> he's a gaming watcher. We're not banning him. Even though he's posting this stuff. I don't know what's happening there. He's a gaming watcher. He watched my Far Cry 6 uh, streams. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a gaming soon this week. Why is this like the third person who's coming here that last chatted in 2021? I don't know. I'm Mexican. These migrants aren't seeking asylum. Those migrants seeking asylum is bullshit. No, what's bullshit is you come in here and say some fucking racialized nonsense to try and get me to serve the top of the hour ad break and, and, and cut me out of the fun that I'm going to have with my top of the hour ad break. And then I never click back on your fucking name. Okay. So now everybody thinks you're some fucking racist asshole. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Get wrecked. I know that you said that specifically to try to clap me. Okay. Well, guess what? You know who just got clapped? You did. But if you no longer want to get clapped by the top of the hour ad break, which is three minutes long at the top of every hour, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's right. Here's a three-minute ad break now, baby. I'm Mexican. And these migrants aren't seeking asylum. They can't escape the top of the hour ad break. It got stolen. Yeah, that's right. Doing a knock. What is this guy saying? This guy that said, I'm... Retired? I'm retired. Is he saying I'm retired? Is that what he was trying to say? Sap who can't even count correctly. That is now the subject. Everything else has been forgotten and the liberal is backpedaling. Wait, you exclaim. How does that work? The liberal has to rebut each and every point, but the conservative takes issue with one and stays in the driver's seat? Are audiences fooled by this? Are liberals that easily snookered? Yes! The answer may shock you. You've just borne witness to the reverse gish gallop, where an entire argument falls apart if any of it can be disputed. These disputes, again, don't have to be good. They just have to call the airtightness of the argument into question. So a good example of this is how conservatives obsess over gaffes, which fucking... Really? Guys? Some Democrat will be all conservatives want to shut. I mean, this is like gaffes are gaffes are apolitical. Everybody gaffes across the board. I think the more interesting part about this is that uh, this is done all the goddamn time 
by debate perverts who uh, fancy themselves to be who fancy themselves to be uh, apolitical in general. And that's it. Shut down post offices as a form of vote suppression. They're pushing voter ID laws, and the post office is where many people get their IDs. And we are relying more and more heavily on mail-in voting. They overwhelmingly try to shut down offices in black and Latina neighborhoods. Also, a lot of services like healthcare and court. By the way, this model basically works phenomenally on the Hassan Abbey broadcast as well, where uh, chatters will come in, say some dumb shit deliberately, clip my response to it, especially if I misspeak, and then use it forever, okay? And then they will turn around and constantly say, remember when you said you were doing on the ground reporting? Fuh! And then if you go, hey, man, I never said that. They go, fucking got him. We owned you. All of it is done at the behest of derailing and being fucking annoying. So let's move on. Or still use physical mail by default, and there can be serious consequences to getting it late. Many elderly people still don't use email, and hey, you know, maybe some of them like getting junk mail. Up, 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 that's it. That's your whole life now. For the rest of your career, you're the asshole who said old people like junk mail. You see, your mistake was assuming that dishonest people abide by the same rules they impose on everyone else. When I was a teenager, some friends of the family would invite me along when they asked my parents to dinner because I would play with their five-year-old and let the grown-ups chat in peace. And he'd make up games where we'd bat a balloon back and forth or whatever and change the rules on the fly when it suited him. Because the rule wasn't actually, you can only touch the balloon once per turn. The rule was Andrew wins. The purpose of a gish gallop is to establish a narrative, not through argument or logic, but force and volume. Once established, it takes a lot less effort for them to maintain than for you to establish a new one. If they shake confidence in your argument, the audience will often revert to the previous argument, whether or not... And the greatest defense is never going on defense and always being on offense. Something to always remember. If you are consistently belittling and trying to humiliate your opponent, and your fan base is geared specifically towards doing that, then it doesn't matter even if you fucking quote-unquote lose a debate, or if you seemingly come across like you won the debate in that moment, it doesn't matter if you were completely incorrect on the facts. Something that I, uh, something that I uh, dove into the other day when I was reached out by someone who debated Destiny on, on Israel-Palestine, where he basically said a bunch of wrong things, like just straight up incorrect information and was disproven after the fact. And his entire fan base basically looked at that and said, yeah, that doesn't matter, dog. You got owned in that moment. Because for a lot of people, they don't really care about the actual facts or about arriving at the truth. They fancy themselves as people who uh, care about the truth, but they don't. That's why I always say debates are all about rhetoric, okay? It's all about rhetoric and overpowering your opponent and not really about the actual truth of the matter. As a matter of fact, you can, found, you can find yourself misled in many instances if you are really, really invested in someone who just debates purely for the sake of debate. That's it. I can't believe I'm doing this, but Hassan Abbey Productions actually posted my reaction. I think I post, maybe I might have even posted my own reaction as well, but um, I don't know where it is, but it was, uh, yeah, Destiny gets fact checked by expert was the video, which I'm not going to show you, but where, what I hate about debates is someone can just make up empirical data on the spot and not be challenged like Shabibo does. Yeah, that's the other part. It's very hard to combat uh, fake evidence, like fake information that you just made up on the spot. You have to know anything and everything. And if someone lies, it just doesn't matter. You're cooked. Then there's also uh, uh, so many different... There are also so many different, like, sidesteps 
like derailments that uh, are going to be really hard to, to combat. That's it. Rage baiting. If you are from a marginalized background, okay? If you are black, brown, Muslim, Jewish, if you are from any sort of marginalized background, in any debate, if you are going up against a person who does not have that same intersectionality and, and has like more privilege than you, regardless of what their financial circumstances are, they can always trigger you by doing certain key points that lean you in the direction of like pre-existing stereotypes. And in your mind, you're very aware of that because like if you're a black person, for example, and you get angry, right? One way that like a white person against a black person can always like make the black person angry in a way that makes them to their audience look better is by debating like being able to say the N word or debating slavery or some shit like that, like dehumanizing your opponent in a way that is really cynical. That will almost always cause an emotional reaction from the other side, understandably, because you're like, what the fuck? What do you mean? I'm a human being. Like, why are you, why are you coming at me with this like belittling shit? Like, like dehumanizing me. And if you actually get emotional in that situation, because obviously this person has just dehumanized you, it's totally understandable that you would get emotional. You've, you know, there's something that, um, you know, there, there, you have something to lose in that situation. <sighs> if you get mad, if you get mad, then they've won because you know, um, because you know that uh, their audience is full of white kids who are going to look at you and go, see, angry black man, you got emotional. Therefore, my side won. That one was ever proven. It's not about which story is true. It's about who sets the parameters for all stories going forward. Who got there first? This is not a debate. This is a Zerg rush. Understand that a dishonest argument is Lego. You haven't dismantled it until every single brick is separated. But an honest rebuttal? An honest rebuttal is Jenga. That's pretty good. Just like Hawking said, IQ tests mean nothing. Some horrible people have high IQ, but emotional IQ. No, it's EQ, no?